and we, we weren't in the company of, of Nicky Henderson because uh, he has or had uh, COVID, but as he has pointed out, that was about the best cure, and he joins me on the line now. Morning, Nicky. <laughs> Hey, morning. 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 Um, uh, you're, you're looking very happy with, with life, and I can completely understand why. But the first important question is, is, is Constitution Hill in, in good constitution this morning? Uh, he was amazing. I mean, you really... You'd hardly know he'd been anywhere yesterday. He looked at me the day in bed. But that's him. <laughs> <laughs> He's as fresh as paint. Um, I haven't had a chance to ring Michael yet, but... Um, no, he, I mean, he really is. He bounced down the yard and um, you, you wouldn't know he'd been anywhere. I mean, to what extent is this really a, a pleasant surprise? I mean, listening to Michael there, clearly Barry Geraghty always thought the world of this horse. Yes, I mean, I, I, there's no doubt that I wouldn't have bought him in the first place if it wasn't for Barry. He was, you know, he, um, he and Warren Newing, they're a, they're a great pair, but we've bought a number of horses from them over the years and we've been very lucky together. Um, he was adamant about this horse and to be fair, there were, there were, there were a lot of reasons that that's that the sales at Dogston at the time, there were a lot of reasons for not buying him. Um, but Barry, was he's always been persuasive. Um, as you know, the first horse I bought off him was Bobsworth, but that was an unbroken horse, so he didn't know anything about that. Whereas, you know, with um, with this fella, Constitution, I mean, they knew what they'd got. Uh, I think they were pretty, you know, he was expected to win his point to point, and 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 the figure was going to be um, rather higher, um, and you know. <laughs> We were just lucky to be able to buy him for what we did on the day because, um, you know, the horse, it, it, he just, he'd, he'd had his race and he'd travelled and he, he probably wasn't just quite looking at his best. Um, but Barry is, you know, we've always got on very, very well and he was very persuasive and he was very, very confident that this was a good horse. Um, Tem temperament seems to be everything with him, Nicky. I'm, I'm fascinated to know what he's like when you work him uh, and, and when it is that he, he shows you the ability? When, when do you think, oh, actually, yes, you are, you are good? Well, it's extraordinary because <clears throat> in all his slow paces, it, um, they're not slow, they're even slower than slow. Um, and, but if you put him in behind a couple of horses, and again, I don't think he gives you tremendous, I've never ridden him, obviously, but, um, you know, they'll always say you don't know that you're sitting on anything until actually you just pull him out and you have to just say, come on. And it, it, it is like changing gear and he just takes off and off, off we go. And I mean, it is very impressive when he does and he does it very quickly um, and very honestly too. He, he enjoys it. Um, he loves schooling and he, he, he loves work, but he, he has an extraordinary attitude to life, which is a great attitude, to be honest with you. It, it, you, you couldn't wish for better. It's, um, um, you know, he, he, he looks after himself and occasionally he looks a bit burly and you have to sort of think, gosh, I better get, do a bit more work with him. But you know, he just loves what he does. And uh, Nicky, the, the comparisons are inevitable between him and John Bond because they're both in your stable. Um, you're going to run them both in the Supreme Novices Hurdle unless there's some wild change of plan that you're going to tell me about, but I don't think there is going to be. Would you ever work them up sides? And if you did, what would happen? Well, I yes. certainly never have done, and, I, and I, wouldn't, I wouldn't be doing it to try and find out. John Bond is a very, very good horse, and I, I'm lucky. I'm the only person that doesn't have to split them, really. Um... You'd be lucky to have one. I mean, I do. I, I do I, I've got a lot. Of, you know, Willie's got the, um, the the bumper horse that was very impressive the other day over hurdles. Um, Sir Gerhard. The Sir Gerhard, correct. Um, and you know, he was very impressive. There's bound to be others, but we're very lucky. There's two here, and again, they both look like two milers. Um, so I suspect come the time, and it, it was lovely. I mean, the first person to ring as they passed the post was JP from Barbados. You know, and well done. And I mean, it, it's great because Michael would be the same with JP. They're good buddies as well. And, and 
everybody's a seven barrows player, which is rather nice. And, you know, I know JP would be very happy for everybody here with what happened yesterday, even if it looks like um, he uh, John Bond could be sort of threatening each other. John Bond's a completely different character. He does, uh, he, he, he's a, I think as you saw him at, at Newbury, he can be on his toes. Um, he can just get a bit warm before racing, but he's getting better and better. Um, and he's much more relaxed at home. Um, and he's in very, very good form. And, and he's, so, he's, he's going to Haydock, is that right, for the Rossington Main? Well, we could go to the Rossington Main at Haydock or even the um, contenders hurdle at Sandown, which we have oh. used for the sort of Bouverdaires and the likes of that before. It, it is not for, it's not a novice hurdle, but it's Sandown and it's, it's, it's a good track for him. Um, Haydock, well, that does get... Sandown's hard work. That was that was hard work yesterday. It's going to be hard work for the contenders hurdle. Haydock is a, possibly even harder sometimes. Um, I know this is not a very uh, Nicky Henderson-ish thing to do, but is there is there any possibility with the entries about to close that you slide either of these into the champion hurdle? No, <laughs> I wouldn't. I wouldn't have thought so. <laughs> I mean, I'm just thinking that a yeah, bit, bit of a lack of depth in the in, in the race. I, I, not I, I can't see us doing that, no. As you say, it would be very... Un that's a curved ball. Um, I would have thought not. I'll just, let you, I'll just let you roll it around in your head for a bit and you've got a couple of days to... <laughs> Got a couple of days to work it out, but but it, what is it? What is your modus operandi? Is you would normally be somebody who would run two horses in the same race if it suited them both, rather than trying to force that force a, a square peg into a round hole. Well, the only way you could force the force of this is to is to come to a conclusion that one of them would get another half mile, which I have no doubt. It's interesting that Barry years a long time ago, when we had Simon Sig. And he, he was a very, very, he used to be very strong. And Barry said that he'd be easier to settle in the, um, well, it wasn't the Ballymore then, but we, we, you know, he looked like a two miler, but we actually ran him in the two and a half, um, which he won very, very easily. Um, and yet he, he felt he'd be easier to settle at two and a half than he would at two. Because of the, you could just find it off a slightly slower pace. Okay. But it was a good call. But it was it, it, it's the last thing that occurred to me until the last minute. I must admit. But you, you'll stick them in both in both races, I guess, just to give yourself the option. I suppose, I suppose you would. I mean, I'd need to talk to JP and and Michael and, and see if they they're happy to do that. But uh, you know, you can understand if you know both horses are entitled title to be. A, a, you know, they look as good as there is, um, or we, we've got anyway. We've got a few to run too, but um, they they look like two milers, to be honest with you. Uh, you probably heard quite a bit of Michael Buckley's interview there, Nicky. He was on uh, on tremendous form after the race yesterday, but talking very extensively and quite movingly about a lot of the ups and downs you've had as as owner and trainer. Um, now, as you as you as you enter. Um, this next phase of your of your career how important to you how of what sort of overriding importance to you is relationships with owners as much as actually training horses well i think absolutely everything because to be fair we're here to try and give them some enjoyment it's a racing is a to to all owners is a it's a hobby um it's a passion um and there isn't an owner in the country that doesn't dream of having a horse like this. And, and, and we're lucky with the others we've got as well. The, the, you know, the, the, the guys at the other end of the tail, like the Shishkins and um, Chantry houses and Epitons and whatever you like, you know, and it's, <clears throat> it's what keeps us going. Um, it's rather nice that the young horses are looking the strong part of the division at the moment, um, which probably means I'm going to keep going even longer. But I have no intention of not. So, you know, we'll we keep going. And I say, this is what keeps you, um, keeps you up, makes you get up in the morning when you know you've got something to look forward to.
And the, but the, the relation with the owner is everything. I mean, we've got to we've got to make it fun. And to be fair, they're all very good friends. Most of us have been together for a very very long time, and and we we are you know we just we enjoy doing it together, and that's it's got to be fun. And you know, you you I suppose you have to accept the fact that you know owners come, owners go, people get loads of money, spend it on loads of horses, and then they kind of drift off elsewhere, and then a, a, a new wave of people come through. I mean, Michael Buckley's been in this game since 1974. It makes him a pretty rare beast, doesn't it? Well, it does, and he's been with me for a, a, he I think sort of since Peter Bailey retired, and he had a lot of good horses with Peter, um, and. Um, you know, we, we've just had some tremendous times together. We've we've been on holidays together. We've been all sorts of places together. We've had the highs and we've had the lows, and that's why I admire him enormously because he's just been so loyal and such a great friend, a real friend. Uh, and to fly over, I tried to persuade him not to. I said, "This is madness. <laughs> I, you, know, you got to put. If this goes wrong, imagine the journey going back to America, right?" Especially with you not there. Now you're someone well, who likes no. you're someone who not likes to be at the races. I mean, how hard was that? It was it was horrible because it's it's far worse being at home and rather being there. As Ed Knight said to me this morning, I suppose you've worn a hole in the floor yesterday waiting for the race. I, did. I guess <laughs> I guess un un unlike Hen, you probably did actually you probably did actually watch the race when it was when it was happening. I, I know you've got to go, but I've got a just a couple more questions for you, Nikki. Um, the the first of those is is about the Clarence House Chase at Ascot. How up for this are you? Do you do you fancy this with Shishkin now? I do. I mean, at the moment we're sort of preparing as if, um, and. I, you know, I, I cannot promise you that's what's going to happen, but I'd like Nico to have a sit on him um, at the end of this week. And, you know, he's very good at being able to tell me he was the one that rode him, you know, just before we went to Kempton and I wasn't even sure we were going to make that, but he was happy. Um, and if we're happy next weekend, there's every possibility that he will go to, to ask it, yes. That is, and that's the intention. Yeah, maybe the intention. It's certainly, it, it's 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 part of the plan. Yeah. And you mentioned Nico de Boinville a couple of times. Uh, he got relatively few column inches this morning. He's just notched up thirty Grade One winners, um, and I calculate that's more than any other jockey currently riding who is based in the UK. Obviously, Davy Russell, Paul Townend have had more in Ireland, and Jack Kennedy isn't too far behind him, but. That is, that is no mean achievement. Uh, just try and explain to me why now he is a crucial part of your setup. And he's just, it, it is, he's a, he's a proper old fashioned stable jockey. Um, sure, he doesn't get that many outside rides, but mainly because he spends the whole of his time here. Um, and he's always got ideas, he's always wanting to school this, try that do something else and he wants to come and he spends his time here and you know he, he's very loyal to the to to us and to the whole yard he's, he's just a he's a fixture um and we've been you know we've been incredibly lucky with our jockeys over the years they haven't um they don't change too often um and we've always had a very strong team like when you know, sadly, poor Jeremy McGrath is still out of action, um, and James Bone is doing incredibly well, and he's backing up Nico now, um, and he, he has the brightest future of anybody I know. So, you know, then there was Barry, then there was Mick, and and you know, they're all we've all been great friends, we've all got on very well together, and they've all been the loyalest people you could wish to work with, and seriously good jockeys though. And, and Nico is, he's a wonderful horseman. I think he, to watching him on the schooling ground, I think even AP, who comes here a lot, um, he would agree with me there. Nicky, thanks so much. I know you're a man in demand. Appreciate your time this morning. Well done yesterday. Thank you, Thank Nick. You, Nick. Subscribe to Racing TV to be notified when more Luck on Sunday videos are appearing online. And don't forget to join me for the show every Sunday morning from nine o'clock with the best guests.